I feel like I should have a book to start this off and I'm like, like where's some books? Where's some books? I don't have any books close by. So we're gonna do this without books for me to hold up and to show you. I don't know why I felt like I needed to prop. I guess I just thought I did. So same outfit, uh-huh, because I recorded two videos back to back. If you haven't seen my previous one, what I talked about, uh, just like in a family update where we've been, what's been going on, plans for the channel, go ahead and watch that. I will link that down below. Um, but now we're gonna talk books, all things books. I created a little like notes for myself that kind of just talk about me as a reader. They're like open-ended questions I'm going to ask myself uh, because I wanna start doing book reviews on here. And I figured before we start talking about all things books, we should probably like get to know each other as readers and so you, should, so you can know what to expect from me and all of that good stuff. If you have stumbled upon this because you are a book lover and you've searched like books, I don't know. My name is Kendra. I am a blogger over at hangingwiththehueys.com. This is our, our family vlog channel, but it's not just really about my family. Uh, we share travel stuff, cabin reviews. I will soon be talking about all things books. Um, I talk about health and fitness, makeup I'm loving, products I like and don't like. I mean, it's really just like a hodgepodge of all the things. So if you like all the things, click that little subscribe button and follow along. Okay, let's dive into the book chat. So. First, I feel like I should share this little random story about what made me really fall in love with books again. I've always read books. My history with reading has been very like sporadic. Um, it's never been something that I've stuck to for a long time, but since I was younger, I would, you know, it's like a hit or miss kind of thing. Well, when I ha had my first baby, he had colic, very bad colic. I have never been so alone and so, just like in mentally and not a good spot. I spent a lot of time by myself with a crying baby. He was very hard to soothe. We spent a lot of time in a car, just driving aimlessly. And I feel like this one book in particular just really saved me mentally during this time. And it's The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. I listened to it on audio. And it really just like took this little tired, sad, emotional mama and like plucked her out and put her in like a field of beautiful daisies. It, it really helped me. And so I connected with what a book can do for me as an adult in that very moment. And I hold that close. That book, even though I've read so many wonderful things since then, that book is just like right here in my heart because it did so much for me. Um, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it. It's a very easy read. I listened to an audio. Um, it was just really good. So that's kind of what has kicked off my reading life as a, in my adulthood. But of course, I've had another baby since then who also had colic and things have been nuts. I have a, a, a soon to be three year old and a four year old. I work uh, part time. My work schedule is like very sporadic and I never really actually know day to day what <laughs> what life has in store for me. So um, audiobooks have been really wonderful for this season of life I'm in right now. I can do the dishes, fold clothes, I can drive, I can take care of my children um, and still listen to a book. Um, I can pop my earbuds in and I usually will one earbud it where I can still hear the boys if they need me. I can answer questions and chit chat because I always still want them to be, I want them to know that I'm available to them. I don't want to be like, huh, 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 don't talk to me. So when they're around, it's usually a one earbud type thing, but when I'm driving, um, I just listen to books. I don't really watch a lot of TV. On occasion, I will. Um, we don't have cable. We haven't had cable for a very, very long time. Um, we have Hulu and Netflix and stuff like that, so the hubby and I will watch that on occasion, but I'm trying to, to pull away from uh, scrolling aimlessly on the phone so much. I've done a lot of that in my life that I'm not proud of. Um, and so I'm trying to, I've got the audiobook thing down. I can rock through some, I fly through audiobooks like nobody's business. But I'm missing the like sitting, stopping, relaxing, and just connecting with a book in hand type thing. And so I'm trying to make that more of a thing in my life this year and I've done really good with it. And it's been really wonderful and mentally has brought me so much. Oh, who would have thought books? They're like, you know, medicine for the soul. Did I just make something up? Do I need to like put some quotes or something, put that on a shirt? I don't know. Um, so there, there's where I am right now. I'm trying to get better at reading, like stopping to read. And I listen to some audiobooks like nobody's business. 
Um, and so when I do these book reviews, did I already say that? I'm lost in what I've said so far, but I think I've said I'm going, I did, I did say that. So when you see book reviews pop up, they may occasionally be for audiobooks, they may occasionally be for actual books that I've set and read. And I will always let you know which form that I selected. And when I select which form I'm going to consume that book in, I always think through the storyline. Um, would I stay more connected with that if I'm actually sitting and taking it in? Is it a very long story? If it's a very long story, maybe I would do better in audio form. Um, who's narrating it? Who is the author? Are their books really good in audio form or paper or like book form? So I take all of that into account when I'm selecting. So I will let you know before my review why I've decided to go either audio or like sit and read it type thing. Um, and let's see. Well, that's good enough. You already get that just of like me as a, as a reader, why I like to read. Let's talk about apps that enhance my reading life. What a wonderful world we live in to have all of these tools to kind of make things easier for us. And my goodness gravy, we do. And as a reader, there's lots of really great apps out there for us to kind of help us in our reading life. One I use all the time is Goodreads. I will leave my Goodreads um, info below if you'd like to be friends over there. I'm pretty good about updating what I'm reading and I'm not the best about writing reviews on stuff. A lot of people over there, they write these really long reviews like synopsis of the books and blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't do that. I'll write about like what I enjoyed about the book without trying to do spoilers um, and what it made me feel and if I selected an audio or whatever. So my reviews are very simple over there, but I do review the books that I read. Um, and I use it as a tool to connect me to books that I wouldn't have known otherwise to follow along with fellow readers who read the same type of books that I like to read. And if I'm somewhere like a book sell at the library and I've come across some random book that I have no idea what it is, I will look up reviews. Now that can be a little bit hard because it can sway you and turn you away from a book that you may have otherwise really loved. So I try to take it all with a grain of salt, but I do like to pick stuff that's probably around like a 3.7 star and above um, so that's a really great tool for that and it's really cool to kind of look back and see your stats for the year what all you've read how many pages you've read and all of that good stuff so audible not audible that's the next thing uh, goodreads is a really great one again I will link it below any of these apps that I talk about I will link them below Audible is a great app for um, audiobooks that's all they do and often on Instagram I will get asked how you listen to audiobooks. Well, Audible is a big one. Um, you purchase the books over there. If you have a membership with them, you get a credit a month, and that credit can be used towards an audiobook. Um, so I do that a lot. They have daily deals. Every day it's something different, and their daily deal audiobook is anywhere from like $1.95, and I've even seen up to $3.50 before. But it's very inexpensive, and it's a great way to find out about some really random books that you may have not known otherwise. So I'm always checking the daily deals out and purchasing those and adding them to my library. People review the audiobooks over there, so it's a great way to kind of, before you decide if you're gonna do audio, audio or um, pay, like book in hand type book, to go look at the Audible reviews and see if people enjoy the narrator. Um, let's see, so Audible, Goodreads, oh, 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 the library. So library is um, another thing, like talking about apps that are so wonderful for us in our life and do all these really wonderful things for us, the library. Oh my gosh, are you using your library? Even if you're not a reader, go to the library. They have magazines, it's relaxing. Take your kids, let them look at the kids section or play with all the fun stuff they have. The library is a wonderful gift that we have and I hope that you're using that resource. In the summer, if you have nothing going on, go to the library, they have free classes. There's a library um, class at mine that has calligraphy and I'm dying to take that class. I'm hoping I get to take it this summer if they offer it. So there's photography courses. Anyway, use your library friends, it's wonderful. So uh, I will obviously check out books from the library. I do it a lot more for my boys. For me, I use their, their app on their phone. It's called Overdrive. Every library has different stuff, but ours uses Overdrive and it is so, Easy. I just go into Overdrive. I can actually select audiobooks that are available now, and then I just add it to my phone. I just click a button, and then boom, it's on my phone. I can listen to it. So I do a lot of audiobooks via our library. If something's on like a massive wait list and I can't stand to wait for it, I will use a credit and purchase it from Audible. Um, or if 
the library doesn't carry it and it's something I really want to listen to, I will purchase it via Audible. So I would say library is like my first because of course I'd rather get it for free than pay for it. And then Audible is the second way that I get a hold of my audiobooks. Um, Overdrive, Audible, Goodreads, Thrifted Books. So Thrifted Books is another app you can add onto your phone and it is just what it's called, Thrifted Books. Um, so far, I, every title I've searched for, I've been able to find on Thrifted Books, and the books are very inexpensive, like a dollar, dollar fifty, three something. The paperback ones, I mean, the hardback ones are obviously more expensive. So um, I have an order coming soon with three books I can't wait to get started on. So I will uh, watch people on YouTube that talk about books, and they talk about something cool, and I'll look up the reviews, and then I'll hop on Thrift Books to see if they have it. Um, now, of course, you could rent from the library, but I'm not the fastest reader because life, because I have two toddlers and a job and things are busy. And so sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to get through a book. I'm getting better about it though, um, because I'm making it more important to stop and like schedule reading time into my day. But um, I get anxious when I get a book from the library because I'm like, ooh, am I gonna, there's like a two week rental. So I'm like, am I gonna finish in time? What if I don't? So sometimes I'm not opposed to renting books in the library and I definitely will do that. But I just enjoy to actually have the books. I can read it at my leisure. Um, I can put it on the bookshelf and maybe pick it up on a later date whenever I feel like that's fitting more of how I'm feeling at the moment. Um, now this isn't an app, but speaking of thrifted books, do you ever thrift books, right? Garage sales, thrift stores are a really great way to add to your library. Our local Goodwill charges 50 cents for paperbacks um, and I think I think hardbacks are $2, so I love, love when I have time just to go and look through those shelves. It takes a while, there's no like rhyme or reason to how they put books on, on the shelves, um, but it's so fun to just kind of look through and find some gems, and I love to do that too. All right, um, my next topic that I've listed for myself is type of books I like to read. So I really do read a little bit of everything, and I select my book on how I'm feeling in the moment. Um, if I've read a lot of really dark, like psycho thriller type stuff, um, I'll take a break. Like just recently I finished a Sophie Kinsella book, which is like total fluff, like good fluff. Um, but right before that I read, I read, I think it's called, um, Crave or something. I don't remember. It was a book of the month club. I think it's Crave and that's dark. And before that I read Woman in the Window. So, um, I read a little bit of everything. Even, I even have some like fantasy stuff, sci-fi stuff, like rom-com things. The, the main thing I really like in my books, um, I like a good character, good meaning like, I don't care if, if the character's like awful or a like, great person, I just mean like a well fleshed out character. Like somebody I can either really hate or root for or connect with. I love a good story. I love the story to be told and painted. I want to just dive in and just live this book that I'm reading or listening to. It's a great escape for me. And not that I need to escape from my life or anything, but sometimes with little kids, you need a little break, you know what I'm saying? So I love to be taken on a journey. I love books that make me think. I love books that are not just delivered to me on a pretty plate. Um, uh, and I don't like them to be too obvious. I mean, oh, sometimes they're a bit obvious and that's okay sometimes if they've hit some of those other criteria. But I, I love a good twist and I love when um, I can just really get so involved in a storyline that I don't realize like what's coming next kind of a thing. So those are some books that I really enjoy. I would say Jodi Pico is one of my one of my favorites, but I did just recently read two books by her that I was not incredibly in love with. They were okay, but they weren't like the best. But she wrote one of my favorite books, which we'll talk about later. Um, but yeah, I haven't like hit that sweet spot of like our authors where I can say like, this is the book and I will always read any book by this author. I like Karen Slaughter. She's a bit like gory for some and graphic, but her stuff is usually pretty good too. So, um, all right, my next topic of discussion. Speaking of favorite books, our favorite books. Um, all of these that I have listed are all books that I listen to on audio, um, but they took me for a ride. I still think about them. I think, did I read these? I read all of these last year or maybe even a year before that or listened to them. I still 
think about them. I will re-listen to all of them at some point. And in fact, one of them I purchased in book in hand form because I love the story so much. And I thought actually sitting and reading the story would take me for a really great ride as well. So uh, the first one is The Storyteller by Jodi Picoult. Now her name, it looks like it's Jodi Picoult when you look at the author, right? But I've watched a few interviews with her and she says Picoult. So we're going to go with that. Um, the Storyteller is Oh, it's a great, it's a great ride. And if you're going to listen to it, I've had people on Instagram that have picked it up because I've recommended it. They've read it and they've enjoyed it as much as like reading it. But I listened to the audio forum and the great thing about Jodi Peacoat books is she hires different narrators for the different voices. And um, with this one, I just felt like that really helped like further paint the storyline for me and the characters. And it was easy for me to like switch back and forth between the different storylines that were going on because I had these different voices that I connect the characters to. So um, it starts off with a girl who encounters um, a gentleman and this gentleman um, and her form this really, and I say gentleman, he's an older, he's like an elderly man. Um, they form this really interesting relationship and a friendship and um, he asks her to help him with something and thus the story unfolds. And a, a good chunk of this is is going back to his life as a child um, and how he grew and also other characters that come into play. It was beautiful. It shocked me. It took me on a ride. I consumed the junk out of it. I could do nothing but listen to this book. If I, if I will lay in bed and listen to an audiobook while I'm laying in bed, that tells you how good an audiobook is because usually when I'm listening to audiobooks, I'm doing all the things. So that was a really great one. I highly recommend that. Um, where'd you go, Bernadette? Ah, uh, this book was so hilarious. Again, I think this one is better in the audio form. A lot of the conversation happens in email or like stories told between people. And I think it would be a bit confusing for that to come off if you were reading it in a book. You might get lost in the conversations, but the um, narrator did fabulous. I will listen to this one again for sure. In fact, maybe this summer I'm going to listen to this one again. It was hilarious. Um, I love the characters. There were moments where I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure I cried in the book too. Um, oh, good, good book. I love that one. Um, and then the last one I have listed is The Brave. This is one that I just randomly picked up at the library without reading any reviews. I didn't even know about this author that wrote this one, but he's actually the same guy that wrote Horse Whisperer, which is very popular. The Brave was one I listened to on audio. Again, it took me for a ride painted this beautiful countryside mountains and horses and all of these characters um so vividly that i could like feel as though i was out in the field with these people um and it's just a, a really great story told great character development i loved this book and that is the brave is the one that i have picked up in a book in hand form so that i whoa i just dropped my pen um, so that I can revisit it and actually have the experience of reading it versus just audio. Um, and I have since listened to another one of his books uh, called The Smoke Jumper, which is really good. I'll be talking about that in a, re in a review vlog soon. And then I recently purchased The Horse Whisperer. I remember loving that movie as a kid, uh, but I haven't seen it in like ages, so I'd love to read it. Uh, I think the author's name is Nicholas Evans. Don't quote me. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of like say hello. This is coming up, the review things, talk a bit about who I am as a reader. And that way you kind of know what to expect from me in these reviews. So if it sounds like something that you're gonna enjoy, I would love to have you follow along. Today, did I say, this is going up hopefully on Monday, which is National Book Day. So do yourself a favor, treat yourself today, go to your library, rent a book, spend time with your kids reading, go get a coffee and go purchase a book for yourself and start reading, okay? It's fun, you just have to find the time to do it. And speaking of find the time to do it, there's one more thing I wanted to go over. We're not, we're not leaving yet, this just sparked something. Something else that people ask on Instagram is how do you find the time to read? So. I don't really have the time to read. I make the time to read. Um, I put my phone down. I put it where I can't get to it, where I can't scroll. Um, I get up earlier so that I have time to read in the mornings. I go to work earlier so that on occasion I can read in the parking lot in my car before I go into work. I will read on my lunch break if I have a decent, like, lengthy amount of time where I can read. 
I will read at nighttime before bed. Previously, I would scroll through my phone. So instead of scrolling, I put the phone down and read. Um, and I, again, I consume a lot of audiobooks. So maybe if you can't really fit reading into your life or you feel like that's not something you're ready to take on yet, try audiobooks. They're, they're wonderful and they've come so far. They're so different than what they used to be way back in the day. And we have these wonderful narrators that really help tell the story. Um, sometimes you get lucky and there's like multiple people hired to tell the story and that really I think helps a lot. I wish all of them would do that. Um, so yeah, I don't really have the time. I just make it important. It's important to me and I just make it happen. So anyways, now we can go. So now go get your book. Go enjoy National Book Day. Um, or is it World Book Day? I think it's National. I should have wrote that down. Uh, you will learn that I say some things sometimes. I'm like, huh, what? That's just me. Um, I will see you around. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've clicked the subscribe button if you are new here and we will see you in our next vlog. Bye!